What's up and welcome back to Free to Play Protocol with Feeny. What up, man? Man, what's going on, everybody? We played Tower of Fantasy. I played a lot of Tower of Fantasy. Not me. I was all right. I had a couple uh, issues in the beginning with it crashing, but after that, it was all right. But I think that it was, was a fun computer. game to an extent. I think that was your computer. To be honest. Oh, I I agree. I think it was. I'm not saying it was the game, but just it was very slow in the beginning, in my opinion. Well, and then it kind of like evened out, but it was never a. Uh, quick you know what i mean let's start there then let's start right at the beginning like the beginning sucked the beginning sucks oh it's it's horrible uh it, it's very 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 slow um you can't skip past most of the speech unless the skip at the top right pops up but i you know i think if they just let you spam through it like any other game it'd be a lot better but it just doesn't allow that, and it drags on. I, and it sucks because the story isn't terrible. Like, the story is actually kind of cool. Um, so we should probably start. Uh, Tower of Fantasy is a open-world RPG MMO. Um, it's similar to that of, like, Breath of the Wild or Genshin Impact, but unlike Genshin Impact, the weapon system is actually fun. The character system is actually kind of fun. But, God... I mean, just considering the fact that I'm level 52 and I still have three campaigns locked is ridiculous. Yeah, I think that was the hardest thing because, you know, I got back on, I, you know, the game crashed when I was like level 18. I stopped playing. I got up to like level 29, I think. Um, but the lock stuff is kind of, it's kind of dumb because um, you can max out your weapons almost instantly after like level 20 and then you of course you got to wait till you get the next tier of weapons but you're still destroying everything you fight until you're your level which i've right. noticed um yeah the game the... really slowed down again at level 50 like my dps output the, the enemies all rank with you so hopping into a boss fight and things like that it's just if your weapons aren't well over your level, it's just a struggle. And the thing I have a problem with, um, we've, we're trying to fight this one boss. Um, oh, the overworld. It's like a crab overworld frost boss. It was level 31 for me, 51 for you, I believe. Mm -hmm. And I believe if you have decent weapons, anybody, if you, if you work good enough and you have the right advantage over the boss using say flame weapons because that's what it was weak to we should be able to take it out by ourselves but we couldn't do anything to it and then it had an insta kill that i couldn't shoot you to save you with a fire weapon it had a countdown for no reason you couldn't escape it so i don't know why there was a 10 second countdown right and then you just instantly die um that that upset me because it's it, maybe if i play by myself i can't go and solo it like it felt just impossible yeah, a lot of the game, you know, for an MMO, there's you don't see a lot of people. There's not a lot of cooperation, and and that's sad because Tower of Fantasy is like it, the mechanics are great. Like the combat feels good, the anime style it looks great, the the customizability is pretty good. I mean, you know, there's not enough outfits or custom outfits, so you can't really make it super custom. But I, I I think our consensus is is although Tower of Fantasy is a pretty fun game on its own, it's just so slow. Yeah, it it it's got a lot of highlights, but it's also missing a lot. Um, the fact that there's a multiplayer uh mode that you wanted me to play, but we can only play it during certain times throughout the day is kind of dumb. It's super. I dumb. think it was like six to eight or six to midnight, and like something the noon something dumb like maybe i just want to go in and that's all i want to play but now you're going to limit me limit me to a certain day oh, you're time of day PUBG. it's just horrible yeah yeah the the battle royale game that 
I, I got in just in time to play a single game, and then I could not find it. Like, the UI is unnavigatable. It's such a pain in the ass to find out what you want to do. Because they just make up all these names, and they expect you to memorize it. It's like, oh, I played this ba Battle Royale game randomly, and I want to play it with you, but I have no idea how I did it. And then I randomly got a mission and found out that's what it was, because you remembered the name. Right. I mean, it's cool that, that you can play it on mobile. Mm -hmm. and connect your account that's cool but when you're on the pc it feels like a mobile game mm -hmm. the ui is all mobile game it's the whole hit alt to t you know press certain things on the screen just give me a menu don't make me s click on the screen the way it does just give me a whole menu oh interesting i have the like, exact opposite opinion i like it i i think it makes it too much like a mobile game i don't think so here's where things are going to get weird. I like the fact that we're moving into a time period where mobile games and PC games can link like this. I like it. I like it. I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but when I hit alt and I click on certain things, then it doesn't work, but then it works another time. Like that, I just want a set menu. Like you could give PC players a set menu. You don't have to be like, well, this is the stuff we have it on the screen. How are we going to transfer it over? Mm -hmm. Well, they do that with other games. Don't you don't have to? I shouldn't have to hit Alt to go hit my rewards menu, or just let me hit Escape. Let me go to rewards. Let me hit Escape. Like give me all the options on the screen. Yeah, you don't have to take that out, but give me a thing where I can just have a whole menu or everything in front of me. I definitely think this is more just the UI is bad. Like. The graphical user interface is just bad. It's a mess. Everything's everywhere. There's a billion rewards to collect, and they're all over the place. It, it makes it really frustrating because you have to spend like 15 minutes just trying to remember what to click on to even get stuff. And then sometimes it wouldn't even let you accept rewards. Yeah. Unless you do it in a certain sequence, which let me hit claim all and it doesn't let you hit claim all but then it tries to make you purchase a premium when you do that that's one thing that bothered me i don't know if you, you noticed that mm -hmm. but if i hit claim all just let me get the stuff that's free you don't have to tell me that i need to buy the premium i know i need to buy it but when you hit claim all it should just give you the ones that you automatically have it shouldn't right. automatically pop up and say hey purchase this that's one thing i didn't like yeah this game definitely teeters the line of way too much money needed to play the game and enough content for you to enjoy it as a free-to-play player yeah it's definitely it's it's you know it's on a balance beam um you're either tilting the one side or the other mm -hmm. so it is very close like you said i think the majority of like the early game gives you a ton of rewards you get a ton of things in the open world but, I mean, that's all limited. You're eventually going to collect everything. You're going to find everything. And new stuff's going to come out. And you're not going to be able to summon or get new weapons or new simulacras just by running around. You're going to have to put $10 down just to gamble. And I don't like that. I don't like loot box pools. I don't like that kind of stuff. Yeah, I agree. I think it's a waste of time and a waste of money for loot box stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But... You know, the game has a lot of ups and it has a lot of downs. Mm -hmm. Um but like you said in an earlier thing, it's an it's a RPG MMO and I seen other than you two players in the amount of time that I played it. And right. we played it a decent amount of time, but I seen two players. I mean, and that didn't even do anything, just ran away from me. I mean, if you're looking for something and and you're a fan of like Black Desert, this is a good companion piece, but this is another one of those free to play games where I'm like, it would be better if it wasn't a live service model. It was just a game. You can play co op with four people. You could do everything together. That would have made this game so much better. I would, if, if Tower of Fantasy was a $20 title or a $30 title, I would have been okay with playing something like this. If you got rid of the pay to play aspects, like if you eliminate. $10 to get these items to roll of loot pool, and it was go here, run this mission to get specific equipment, which that is still in the game, but there's a huge difference between a premium content and a, and a non-premium content. Like, overworld items are always weaker than the premium content, and this game does have PvP, which means if you pay for the game, the PvP is not available to you. You will get steamrolled almost every time. 
I didn't get any of the PvP because, like I said, I wanted to go play it, and I got time restricted, which, you know, made me actually uninstall the game. It's, but it's a fair criticism. Um, Cause I, I, you know me, I'm a multiplayer guy. I want to go and do PVP. I want to sweat it out because I'm competitive and I love the PVE to an extent. Like I'll sit there and I'll go find, cause I like collecting things. I'll go hit the little gadget in the top left corner that helps me find certain things I couldn't find. Mm -hmm. I'll go around and collect all those, but to a, there's a point where I want to go fight a human right. where I get annoyed of fighting AI. And the fact that I got time constrained, it, it, it really hurt me in the fact of playing the game because that's what I look for. I look for multiplayer PvP aspects. Um, and hearing it from you, it sounded like such a cool concept how it was, and me not even be able to get to do it. It is was. What, uh, it was. Is what kind of drew me away from the game, to be honest with you. Yeah, the the PvP system, like the battle royale, was great because they they instead of having um your uh jetpack and stuff like that from your relics. You actually grapple onto the enemy and like pull yourself towards them and it does a little bit of damage. So like it puts emphasis on hiding in the grass and having the better equipment and having med kits and I, I really enjoyed the way that it played. And it, it's just your typical PUBG, you know, the smoke closes in and in this it's the omnium radiation that closes in. But you know, you, you pick up the scythe and you don't know if you're gonna attack a person who's using like a healing wand a pair of guns and a hammer, you know what I mean? You can get outplayed in that that way. You know, all all things together the, the the PVP was good, but it needs to be always available. Like as soon as you install the game and you load up your first character, the first thing they should do is be like, here's a uh completely available battle royale mode that's just there and the people who don't want to participate in your overworld adventure game should have access to play the battle royale immediately because the battle royale is good the rest of it is meh the story is way too convoluted <laughs> like there's so much time just spent running around in the open world or teleporting here and then teleporting there just to have a character talk to you for five minutes and just monologue oh the monologuing on the one part after you get to the second i'm trying to spoil anything but after you get to the second part of the map you have to run around for like 10 minutes Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing happens in the first part. You meet everybody. Like, I get I need to meet everybody, but do a quick fade in and out of, oh, this character. How There's plenty of other games that show you where they are and what they're doing, who they are, instead of me running, which the AI runs absolutely slow. I, I run there, and I'm waiting for them to run there for 40 seconds because they're slow. And then they talk even slower that you can't skip it. Like, I get it. This is who I need to know. This is their names. But they can do it in a quicker fashion. They're unmemorable. Well, unless it's like Pervy Sage's voice actor, you know, he, he he's my favorite, okay? Yeah. And it's just that's just because he's Pervy Sage. But um There's a lot yeah, of they're really not memorable good voice actors at all. There's the only lot. one that I thought was memorable is the two you didn't like. Two I didn't like. The little clown boy. Oh yeah, they were annoying. They're annoying, but they were memorable. And the little Mia bot, I think her name's Mia, right? Yeah. That's about it. Yeah. Because they actually have like a unique character, like one of the things that I felt was lacking in this was just general character development. They're they're just generic anime style looking characters with famous voice voice actors behind it. But they have like no passion. Nothing nothing's happening that really makes me go, Yes, I, I wanna know what happens to this character. I like you're following this Zeke guy around and every time you run into him, nothing happens. It's it's so frustrating. Yeah, he just walks away from you, doesn't say anything. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that that's the downside. The game looks gorgeous. It has a great concept, but it's got its flaws. It's slow and not memorable. It's mm -hmm. not a memorable game, other than the way it looks. But it, it definitely had opportunity to be memorable. Like, if they just cut out a lot of the bullshit and just powered through, like, the main story. Like, just give us the overworld immediately. Run us through the basics real quick. Basic tutorial. Introduce the characters, and then just let us go. Let us go interact with the missions as we please as the players. Don't force our hand. Because there's a lot of people who are going to play Tower of Fantasy, and their friends might have already be played and be level 60, and they can't even play together. It's It's so annoying. 
I mean, I think they can play together because certain bosses do level to your scale, mm -hmm. which was nice to see. But that's what also makes it weird to me is how can your boss be 51, mine be 31, <clears throat> and we still get one shot even though they're leveled to us and we can't even touch them even though our weapons are maxed. Right. Like we were doing no damage and well, both not... our weapons were maxed. To be clear, our weapons are not quote unquote maxed. They were maxed to our, our level. level. Yeah. So. But if that boss is based off our level, we should be able to do decent damage to him. I'm not saying one shot it, but right. I did almost no. I mean, we were attacking it for about an hour and a half, dying and respawning. We, we made sure one of us stayed alive so the boss's health wouldn't regen. Mm -hmm. But we didn't even get half of its first bar gone. It had five, and it had five bars. Ridiculous. And there's nobody like else on the server. Us... Like, I'm going in the chat and I'm saying, hey, we're at this overworld boss. Can someone come help? Nobody shows up because the MMO aspect isn't very good. No. And, you know, it's got a lot of good reviews on Steam. It's 7 out of 10 on Steam. Google Play, it's a 4.3 out of 5. Apple Store, it's a 4.3 4 out of 5. Like, it's got good reviews, but how old are those reviews? You right. know what I mean? Like when, when it was, there was millions of people playing right now. The average player count, I think is like 2,100 that I looked up. It's not good. Like that's not good for MMO. The fact that I seen two people in the, the time that I played other than you. My was just... We're on the American <sighs> server. We're in freedom Oasis, which is the first server it gives you for America, which means it should be the most populated server. We chose that with the intent of trying to play with other people, joining up their teams. But the multiplayer did not open up until level 32. You couldn't even get there, and you put 26 hours in the game. It took me 48 hours just to get to the 50s so I can access a mode because I wanted to experience it before we talked about it. That's ridiculous. It's insane. And I, I understand, like, MMOs should be slow grinds. They're, th they're games that are supposed to be played for a long period of time. But I, I think I'm just over live service in general. And I I never really cared for MMOs. So I, I know I'm jaded in this regard. But this game had so much going for it to be awesome. And again, they just slipped and they were like, live service, we want to make as much money off of it as we can. You know, I never really got into MMOs either. The only MMO game that I still play to this day on and off that I was super into was RuneScape. You played New World for a while, didn't you? Yeah, but that didn't really feel like an MMO to me. That just felt like a giant just pvp if that makes sense it didn't feel like you had to grind so much until you got to max level right um but that also got stale because you end up doing the same things over and over and over and over again and the and the problem with that game too is the same with this game you need to get to a certain level to do the pvp mm -hmm. not like open world pvp but what everybody else does the wars you know stuff like that but it's same with this. I want to go do this. I can't do it until I'm a certain level. So that's what falls short in these MMO games. Right. I agree. I agree. Like, I I played Code Vein not too long ago on the channel, and that has a very good art anime style. Um, and it's similar to that of, like, Devil May Cry and its combat, which I could say Tower of Fantasy kind of has. It has an action hack and slash feel going on. But the entire time I played Code Vein, I was like, oh, I'd love to play with my friend. That would be great. There's two characters. It would be cool to have, like, you know, missions where we can play together. And now I played Tower of Fantasy, and I'm like, once again, this is supposed to be an MMO. I run over to a mission. Why isn't it prompting you to just transmit straight to me and join me in this mission? No, I have to go into these repeating missions. I can't do any of the story missions with you. It, I don't like that. That's dumb. Yeah, that's what makes no sense. Like, I went to, there's so many things where we're already in a team. Well, you can't do this in a team. Why not? Why can't you just stay in the team and do it anyways? Like, it, it... Or not even, why can't I just run through it with a friend? Why can't I do the story mode with a friend? Like, right. it's, if you have more than one person, upscale and add more enemies. Do this, do that. But mm -hmm. the fact that it's an MMO and I can't run 
story missions with my friend is ridiculous. Right. And there's it's like the gathering system's fine. Like I like that the getting the stuff for the summons isn't too hard, but the reward pool is pretty small. You know, I I eventually got my five star pummeler and I only had one star left. But the fact that that's a five star pummeler maxed out, I had all of the right mods equipped, and it still was just a slog to fight anything. Like I, I'm not even getting hurt. Like they're they can't even hurt me, and it's still like I'm doing a thousand damage and it's nothing, and I'm just ticking away. And there's six health bars. And it's like every fight is just thirty minutes of ugh. The only thing I'm going to take away from this game is the customization, even though there wasn't a lot of outfits, is actually pretty cool. Mm -hmm. um, if, between the eyes, the hair, I mean, how many games do you see that let you have three different types of shades in the hair itself? Like, most of the games, it's, all right, you pick blonde, your hair is blonde. This, I can do the back of my head black, halfway up gray, top with highlights, purple or green, or whatever you want it to be. Mm -hmm. Um. You can, you know, you can morph the whole face, you can do the eyes, morph the eyes, how big your pupils are, the way your smile's curved, how big your smile is, if you want to frown, like, the customization is actually one of my, was my favorite aspect of the game. Um, but then it dulled out after that. Because I didn't get to see what anybody else did, because I seen two people. Or if the people, and the two people I seen were using the characters that you unlock from the game. Nobody was using their custom character except yeah. for you. Yeah, they, everybody was playing with me. their simulacros. I'm sure there's a reason why, like, I'm, maybe there's something that you can play with the simulacros and it ranks them up or something. I don't know. It, you know, when it comes down to it, they didn't really explain how to play very well. I'm sure there's some journal system that's a thousand page, pages that you have to read through to fully understand what's going on. And every game needs a wiki these days. I don't know. It Overly complicated for the sake of being overcomplicated isn't a good method of making a game. I think it's a great mobile game. I don't think it is a great PC game, if that makes sense. Um, I feel like the player base is mostly on mobile. Mm -hmm. And I think, I mean, that's what it was. It came out to me. It, it was originally just a mobile game that went over to PC. Um. And, but it, to the point of, I still wouldn't try it on my phone after this because it turned me off. Mm -hmm. I understand completely. Like I'll, I'll be uninstalling this after I record the footage for it, and I don't, I don't see myself ever going back to it. It, it didn't do anything to grab me and hold me. Like I got my fill. I, I did enough of the game to get my fill. Even if the PvP was fun, I don't see a reason to continue it. Yeah, I recommend at least try it, see if you like it. Um, but like you said, I I uninstalled it as soon as, right before we started doing this, because I I was done with it. Right. So there's just other there's other MMOs that are so much easier to just hop into and have fun. I I would prefer Tower of Fantasy over Genshin Impact personally. Only because I like the fact that like you build up the charge on your weapons, and when you switch it, there's the special attacks and. You know, that stuff is all really cool. I, I, I never really cared for how Genshin Impact played. We'll we'll get to Genshin Impact eventually. But I don't know, man. It it Tower of Fantasy, it, it's an upsetting. This this is an upset. Like this is something that I I saw in the store and was ready to check out and have fun with and ultimately I, I was disappointed. It it just had nothing really going that was there to hold my retention. Yeah, the excitement died after the first couple hours of playing it for me. Especially seeing the voice cast lineup. Like, the voice actors are awesome. They got a ton of great voice actors. But it's it it's a subpar performance. Like, you can tell they were, probably weren't paid a lot. They were given the lines they they weren't really given much context like sometimes the voice acting doesn't really fit the scene very well it's cheesy it doesn't sound like it was mastered very well and that's not a and slide it happens i get it i feel like they just threw it at them and said here just read this and we're good to go silent hill effect 
no context, like you said. And yeah. they just gave him a piece of paper and said, read this, and we're good. Thanks for your time. Right. I, I would like to see Power of Fantasy, you know, break out of this. And even the fact that, like, you can spend money and summon things, and then they're non-permanent is fucking ridiculous. Wait, what? That's yeah. a thing. Yeah. Oh, I know what you're talking That one person that's only there for until that season's over or whatever. Yeah. But you got to spend money to get it. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Like, why would I want to gamble my chance of playing a character that I can't keep, run missions that I can't even run with my friends? It's just so dumb. <sighs> It's so dumb. The and way the cookie crumbles, my friend. With with this show, right, FTP, what's important to understand as a viewer is we're putting time in the beginning and we're, we're playing these games for 20 to 40 hours, right? That's a lot of dedication already. And I know there's a lot of people out there who will have played Tower of Fantasy for thousands of hours, and they're like, you're dumb. This is how you do it, blah, blah, blah. And you're, I want you to be understanding that what you're doing is proving our point. The game did not teach us well enough in the early time for us to understand things. If there are ways to do things and unlock things, it was not made clear enough to us as players. And then there was not enough of a player base for us to then grasp the game even better. To our experience... Everything was locked down. It was a buy-in to play this game experience. The PvP was time-locked. Characters had non-permanent equipment. It, it looked beautiful. It played beautiful. Awesome voice cast. The world is massive. The vehicles are cool. The relics are cool. The combat's cool. But at the end of the day, there's a game here with no context. Yeah, it's it, it was a struggle. And you know, people are going to complain, but it is what it is. Um they they should have just been, done a better job as what it is. It's it sucks to say, but I always say simplicity is king. Like if you're going to make a battle royale game, just kind of copy what PUBG does. Make a ring that closes, make an interesting map. Do the tab to open your inventory and swap equipment system. It works. It We know it works. As long as your game is interesting, people will play it. If it's not interesting and it's overly complicated and has a billion menus to do one thing, like collect a reward, I don't want that. Nobody wants that. It's ridiculous. Yeah, it was. there was a lot that should have just could have just they could have you know and essentially that's not dumbed down they could have just made it into a smaller package and just let it work that way um but us talking complaining about it, it's not going to help maybe it will maybe they'll look at it and be like oh maybe that's something that needs to be fixed but i don't i don't think i don't think what i'm saying is necessarily a complaint more of like a review from a biased perspective like I I want to play a good MMO that isn't absurd. The fact that this game had like 17 currencies should annoy the shit out of you. Oh, it does. The, like I didn't understand what half of them did. Right. And then it explained to you. It's just oh, I got 10 of these. I can finally open it, but I don't even know how I got them or when I got them or it just it was it was annoying. Um I'm glad I played it. I'm glad I uninstalled it. <laughs> I'll never pick it up again. So that's just my opinion. The next game we're going to be checking out is Lost Light, which is one that we're both kind of interested in and excited to check out. Um, it's kind of like a Tarkov Marauders clone, if I understand correctly. You were you kind of checked it out. Do you have any info on that? Uh, that's what I got the feeling of. It's just uh, looks like a dummy downed Tarkov. Um, 
which I think is going to be interesting because there's a lot of stuff in Tarkov that people don't know. Unlike unless you have a lot of hours, I have a lot of hours in Tarkov, so I understand the game completely. But uh, just going in the menu system and looking at like the ammo and other things, it definitely looks like uh, it's a dumbed down version for people that don't have enough time to get into Tarkov and understand actual ballistics. Mm -hmm. um, it looks like it's going to be pretty good to me, honestly. A little bit so, more arcadey. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it'll definitely be a nice break from Tower of Fantasy because, man, I'm over it. Yeah, over it. Never playing it again. Sorry to tell you. I recommend it. I do recommend it. Try it. Give it a thing. You know, give it a try. If you like it, you like it. I won't ever play it again. But, hey, you might play it and you might play thousands of hours. Mm -hmm. I would not not recommend a game unless it was really, really bad. Um, The game was decent. So I say give it a try and get your opinion on it. I agree. I would definitely say tr this is one of those ones that's worth checking out. Um, I would say don't put your money into it. It seems like it's just going to hit like a difficulty curve right at the end of the main story, and it's just going to spike in complications. I I've seen it before. I think that's what's going to happen. Um, you know, but if you like running around new worlds, seeing new things, the Tower of Fantasy is definitely cool in that aspect um i think the landscapes are definitely like the high point of the entire game just getting up really high and looking out at stuff is is probably the best part and i only went to three lands there's like seven or something by the time i got to the abandoned island i was or not an artificial island i was pretty pretty uh over it at that point nothing really changed the combat never changed uh, you know, as you scale, everything feels the same constantly. So I would say it's definitely worth a check out, but I, w I wouldn't throw money on it. I would just run around, check out the open world, see what you like, see what you don't like, and build your own bias off of that. Yeah, I agree. Um, do not throw money at this game. Unless you end up getting a thousand hours, then you want to throw money at it. Hey, do you, boo boo? That's but, right. You know. Just don't do it right when you buy the games. I know some people have, buy the games free to play. When people get a game, they automatically throw $40 at it. Don't do it. Save your money. Right. I agree. I don't think this game's going to be around much longer. It, it seems like live service is dying. MMOs aren't as popular anymore. People are moving into like single-player games where they have higher expectations for their games. So Tower of Fantasy is not meeting those expectations, and it has a heavy pay-to-play aspect. So. I wouldn't throw money at it. I would experience it, give it an idea, and get out. Yep. I, I you know, I agree 100%. And really, um, it's sad because the game, when I first played it, was great. It was cool. The customization was cool. The fighting was cool. And then, it, like, like we both said, it dulled out, pay to win, pay to play. Um, but... I think this is really the first game that we've had these kind of reviews on, so it's different mm -hmm. to see. And this is this is a message from me to the developers of this game. The smartest thing that you could do right now is take the engine, take the assets, and make a single-player experience. Make a 30-, 40-hour open-world RPG game. You have everything there. Everything is set up for you to make an awesome, awesome RPG. Just, Just do that. Don't make an MMO, don't make a co-op experience, just make an awesome RPG because that's what's going to get you money. Make a $20 indie game, I, I don't care, just enough with that. Like you, Your studio can do so much better. And yet they won't listen. They might, you never know. They, I don't know, when you got people that just throw money at a game, man. They're probably making a lot of money. Oh, I'm sure there's definitely whales, for sure. But, you know, the whales dry up eventually. That's that's what the thing is. That's why mobile games just bank on whales so much. And that's why GTA V is continuing to succeed. It's because of the whales. But, I don't know, man. I'm never going to be a whale. I, I couldn't afford to be a whale anyways. I just think if this game had a couple changes, it'd be a lot better, but... Well, you know, you look at this, and then you look at, like, Enlisted. We just played Enlisted. After playing Tower of Fantasy, like, I would go buy a premium account so fucking fast and Enlisted. Now looking back and seeing that it's, like, 30 bucks for the year, 
the enlisted deal is so much better. Yeah, it is. 100%. And it's crazy to see with these different free-to-play games we're playing how different they are. Um, of course, we're probably going to run into some of the same, same concepts, same exactly the way it plays, oh, yada, yeah. yada, yada. Oh, but, yeah. We'll point but, it out. Um, it's interesting to see, honestly. Like I said, um, you know, Genshin Impact and this have a lot of similarities. You know, the overworld aspects of Genshin Impact feel a lot, you know, a lot like this. Like, they feel a lot like Tower of Fantasy, but Tower of Fantasy just did it slightly better. and then way worse in other aspects even though i would say genshin sucks but you know it is what it is never played it heard a lot of really bad stories about it the only reason why we haven't covered genshin impact is because the anti-cheat client is the same one as valorant and i won't touch valorant gotcha so got it yeah no valorant don't expect valorant on this show (laughs) <laughs> anything ea blizzard those guys we're not going to touch them they're not safe to play well from my perspective they're not safe to play i'm sure they're fine for the majority of people man i play a lot man in nhl so i can't say if yeah, you play, play on a games. console well yeah because if you play sports games on a pc what are you doing i don't know playing sports game on a pc yeah a horrible experience <laughs> like that's what it is we should probably clarify now um, you've always been heavier into multiplayer games, and it's one of the reasons why we made FTP is you have a lot of experience in multiplayer where I have a lot of experience in single player, and those two concepts clash in this show. Um, now that we're on episode five, was this five or four? Uh, we played Enlisted, Tower of Fantasy. <laughs> <laughs> I, is, I think that's it. We only did two episodes. Batterline, Paladins. Oh, four. Yeah, four. <laughs> man, I got a horrible memory, man. Yeah, um, so I I have a lot of experience with single-player games. I did a lot of QA work for single-player games. Uh, my, my experience is single-player games. I love single-player games. That's what I do, and you're the exact opposite. You, I hate single-player games. You know, I can't stand them, dude. <laughs> I'm too competitive to destroy bots. I need to go find someone that's better than me, get my skill better than them, come back and destroy them a week later. It's just that's how I'm built. You know, I need to always be getting better. In single players games, I feel like you can only get to one spot from personal experience to where, all right, I can beat the game. That's it. You can't get any better unless you speed run it, which I understand. Yeah. yeah. But. If we're talking just non speedrunners like myself, you get to the point where you beat the game and you're done. I go to a multiplayer game, I'm like, oh, I'm destroying these kids. Well, I just got destroyed, and every time I play this kid, I get destroyed. And all right, now I know why, where I need to be. I get to that point, I beat him, and I keep going, and I get to the next person that's better than me. It's just, it's the growing of a, you know, getting better at a game is what I like the best. And I feel like for people that don't speedrun, there's a limit in single player games. We should probably also stay at that. We are both biased in this regard. Like your opinion is not factual and neither is mine. It's just how we oh, feel. Oh no, not at all. Yeah. yeah. I don't want people thinking like you hate God of War and you hate Skyrim and you hate Red Dead Redemption. It, it isn't that case because you watch a lot of YouTubers and you watch a lot of single player games on YouTube. I've seen you. So there's certain single player games that I will play. And there's other ones that I won't touch. Like, I love the Gears of War series. I loved the Assassin's Creed series. You didn't. I loved, um, you know, I can't think of it right now because it's going to be off the top. I had my memory shot. But I do like single-player games, just not all of them. Like, Kingdom Hearts, loved it. Gears of War, loved it. Assassin's Creed, loved it. Call of Duty campaigns, loved some of them. So. That's about it. That's all I wanted to say. Do you have anything closing? Give it a try. Don't spend your money on it. Um, I won't be touching it. That's all I gotta say. We will not see you guys in Tower of Fantasy, but if you've enjoyed this video, we will see you in the next one. So hit the subscribe button. Leave a comment. Let us know how you feel. What's your opinion? Do you prefer multiplayer or single player? Those are things that we want to know because we'll be checking out different things in the future. And don't forget to go to the comment section where there'll be a pinned comment so you can go check out Feeny's channel where he's going to be putting up whatever he wants, because that's how YouTube should be.
a hobby. <laughs> and as always, have a nice day. Have a good one.